Hello and welcome to another Two Minute Tuesdays, although today's session will be slightly longer than two minutes. I want to walk you through what was new within data loss prevention, data classification, and our new DLP alerting capabilities, which are in preview at the moment. So if we head over to the new compliance portal and data classifications, this is where you can see a snapshot of what types of information are within your environment, so within the Microsoft Cloud. And also, if you have this set up, our Microsoft Information Protection Scanner that can reside on premises to be able to scan on premises file shares and SharePoint server as well. From there, we can also go to Content Explorer. And if I roll these up, you're able to see all of the different categories that we can drill into and very clearly see the repositories that type of information is stored within. So if we have the uh, right permissions within here, we can even see a preview of those files and the confidence value about what type of information it resides within that content. And the system's given this one a 55% that this item contains a classification of diseases. If we go over to the Activity Explorer, before this was a great way of seeing when labels had changed or when different content had been being classified. But now we can see items at the endpoint. So this is using a, a part of Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. So it can be used uh, alongside another AV product if you have that as well. But we can see the verbatim about what's going on with that type of alert. So we can see the different activities. So this one has a file been modified. We can see uh, the file name and the end user. We can also see when DLP, so data loss prevention policy, has been triggered for that type of uh, uh, activity and if we scroll right down the bottom here we can see where those files reside so for example this one doesn't actually reside within office 365 or on an on-premises file share at all it's uh, sat on that user's endpoint machine and then right down the bottom we get some more information about the pc and the type of application that this activity has been derived from now it's really easy to be able to set up new data loss prevention policies. So if we head down here to the data loss prevention um, creation area, we can see all of the policies that we've got set up today. And if I click on create policy, then we can start building up our unified data loss prevention policy from one place. And that will cover everything uh, within the core repositories of Office 365, which is Exchange and SharePoint. Uh, so if you're using things like Teams or other services within Office 365, those are the repositories that the majority of data is st stored within. We can also choose different categories to look at data that resides at the endpoint. So when the user is touching or creating that data. And these unified policies also allow us to build that same policy, but across to our cloud app security product. So that allows us to monitor both Microsoft products and third party products as well within those uh, cloud repositories. So if I just give this a name a second, this is where we can decide what are the top locations we want this data loss prevention policy to look across. So you'll see all of the kind of normal Office 365 elements here, but you'll also see Teams chat and channel messages. So that's when somebody is talking about something sensitive within the chat. We can get this DL policy, DLP policy to trigger on that. We've also got devices now as well. I'll show you how that works in a moment. And Microsoft Cloud App Security. So I don't have to build this DLP policy within here and then head over to the Cloud App Security portal and create the same policy within there as a duplicate. Now, as I walk through these policies, this is more of an express way. We can go uh, into detail with more of the advanced setup, but this allows us then, if we scroll through this wizard, is to turn on both the auditing, so the monitoring capabilities and the blocking methods for uh, those endpoints. So we can see here, these are the type of activities that we can audit on. So things like copy to clipboard or copying data to USB drive, whoever does that anymore, um, or copy into network share or through unsanctioned applications. And you'll see on these drop downs, I can choose between uh, audit only, so monitoring those activities and then be able to see those within the audit log or the data classifications that I've just shown you. Or we can allow the user to um, be, uh, be notified that it's been blocked, but override that activity so they can carry on working or enforce uh, that policy. And then from an MCAS perspective, these are the third party applications that we can 
govern uh, this type of DLP policy in. So if this triggers, for example, my corporate repository uh, we're using is Box, then I can decide to trash the file, or if it was trying to be sent outside of the organization, then I could remove external users from that or remove the direct sharing link. So once we've created those policies, we have three different options. Do I want to turn it on in monitoring mode first, which is probably a good idea. Otherwise I'm gonna break uh, my organization from working. But the next step might be show those end users policy tips. So, hey, this is gonna be blocked in the future, uh, but for now you can carry on working. And then the last one around here is to be able to enforce that policy. So prevent that end user from sharing outside the organization or cross boundaries or even um, automatically encrypting that content so the end user doesn't need to do that. Once we're happy, we can click next, review our settings and then submit that. Okay, let's head over to our PC here. I've set up a VM that is uh, AAD, so Azure AD joined. That means we can enroll this PC then to our endpoint DLP capabilities. And just because, make this super simple, we have these very easy scripts that you can deploy via your normal method of software deployment. Or if you want to trial this out, you can just go to the portal uh, download these little scripts, run these, and it'll roll Defender that is built into Windows 10 and enable that for that endpoint DLP. So you'll see on the desktop here, I have a number of files that doesn't don't reside in Office 365. These contain dummy credit card information, which is great. We can also have our Microsoft Information Protection scan this content, even though it doesn't reside in Office 365 or it might reside on premises on those file shares we can get um, MIP to be able to classify and encrypt that content automatically if we wanted to. But let's just say I want to copy this credit card information, which allows me to do. And then I jump over to uh, my favorite search engine and I try and copy and paste that sensitive information into something else. You can see the bottom here that the endpoint DLP now is kicked in and say, hey, uh, this what you're trying to copy is sensitive data. Remember that the, the content, so the Word document here isn't classified yet. Uh, otherwise I'd break my demo for you, uh, it would prevent me from doing this. But you can also see that I have this override um, action as well. So I can, I'm allowed to uh, carry on the work that I was doing, but also all of that information is being audited as well. Similarly, if I try and go into this Word document and I try and print it, Dismiss this a second. You'll also see DLP has prevented me from uh, copying or printing out this content. And if I go across to my personal Dropbox account, you'll see that if I try and drag and drop this non-sensitive file that doesn't contain any, uh, any uh, sensitive data in it, I'm allowed to copy to it. But if I try and draw, drag and drop this credit card document, you'll see DLP kick in. So we can have both uh, sanctioned and unsanctioned applications within here. We can also say uh, that different domains are unsanctioned as well. So what I've done is I'm using Chrome to be able to show you this in a demo, but we want to uh, change that behavior for those end users and make sure they're using a corporate standard, which is Microsoft Edge, because we have a lot more controls and security built into that product. So even down to the fact that if I try and open up a text document here. And let me just open up my Word document with my credit card information in. I'm going to copy that, open up my Word document and try and paste it. Now it's going to block me. This time around, I'm going to say, right, take action. So I want to allow this copy and paste to happen into this text document. So let's copy this again because it's clear the clipboard. Paste that in. So now it allows me to do it. And I'm going to save that back to the desktop. Again, remember that this doesn't reside in Office 365. We're not having MIP kind of kick in and, and encrypt this data. Now this is a uh, notepad document. But if I try and open that, again, the system has detected that it contains sensitive information and it's uh, prevented me from even opening up that document altogether. So uh, just to show you some of the capabilities that are available within Endpoint DLP. Now you might wonder where all of those alerts are going. I showed you one way to be able to see it. 
But this is a new capability that's in preview at the moment. So when I click on data loss prevention and alert policies, uh, we have this tab called alerts. And this is where I can see all of the DLP policies are matched for specific activities. And again, we get the same look and feel about what's going on within this, uh, this detail. So I can see UK financial data is the policy has been matched. I can see that the user who has performed the event, which is great. I can go across to the events tab as well and get more information about the content. So the system detected that it contained a credit card number, at least one, and it had a confidence level about 90, no, 85%. And the actions taken was to block access to that end user. So what we also have in here is a lightweight case management system. So I can notify the users, hey, you know, we've detected this, or we can manage this alert as well from this product. So we could say that we're investigating this, we can assign it uh, to maybe Adele, and we can do a part look up here, and we could type in some notes for, for her as well and save that off. So again, we've got one product, not just be able to uh, control those alerts, but also being able to surface out all of those alerts from your endpoints, Office 365, and third-party applications like Box and Dropbox and all of that. Before I let you go, I just want to show you some of the endpoint DLP settings. So from here, we're able to exclude different file paths on those endpoints that won't be monitored, which is pretty cool. Um, we can also tell the system about what are the unallowed apps. So where I was using uh, OneNote, then I've put that in as a disallowed app. Then we can also say what are unallowed browsers, again, to enforce that behavior to Microsoft Edge, so I put in Chrome here. And then we can decide what are the allowed and blocked service domains. So I've said Dropbox is probably an unsanctioned uh, domain that I don't want my end users to go to. So I've configured that there as well. So that concludes today's two minutes Tuesdays. Uh, <laughs> it's been about 11 minutes. But I just want to say thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time.